friends, I'm Mike the Fit Farmer, and this past week we celebrated our last average frost date. And looking forward into the forecast, it doesn't look like we have any chances of, of frost at all. So that means I'm happy, the chickens are happy, and the greens are happy as well. So the growing season is on going forward. And as former wrestler Booker T used to say, it's on like neck bone, sucka. <laughs> so with the chances of frost gone now, we went ahead and started removing the plastics out of off of our low tunnel areas, folding them up, putting them away in the back of the garden, and started taking our hoops out as well as taking away our sandbags which held our low tunnels in place. We won't need those anymore for the areas that we're growing some other things in. We, don't, we no longer need low tunnels, which makes me really happy. And as we were taking away the plastics and as well as some of the tarps in the areas that we're not using anymore, we came across a couple of snakes. One snake I'd never ever seen before, we found a worm snake, as well as we came across uh, another snake. And we have a bunch of snakes, we're coming across a bunch of snakes right now. So I thought it'd be neat to take this one baby snake and put it in with the chickens. Here's what happened. Okay, right here, let's see what they do to it. Get a close one. The duck went for it first. So one chicken got it, and then they start playing this game of, I don't know, chase? Chase the chicken with the snake, and they're each trying to get the snake. She still has it! She still has it. <laughs> it's like football almost. Another one has it. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, I got it, I got it. <laughs> well, now that this morning's entertainment is over with, it's time to get serious and get to work. We have a number of things that I need to get done or we need to get done here on the farm today. And since this is the last average frost date for our area, uh, we're really gonna go to work to really make sure these beds are prepped and go ahead and transplant some of the things that I've been really needing to transplant, some of our pepper plants, squash, and cucumbers. So we're gonna get on it. Need to finish digging out this trench right here for a walkway, and at the same time, Ben is adding some compost to this bed so we can basically mix it up, blend it up, and then be ready to transplant into it. Okay, now that we have the trench dug out and Ben has brought in the compost for this bed, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some, just some amendments to the soil. Uh, I've known for some time that we have been lacking, especially initially when we came and started our farm and garden here that it was lacking in potassium, phosphorus, and a little bit on the nitrogen side. So I'm gonna be adding some amendments of that mix to these beds here just to really help out and uh, make sure that the plants have what they need to grow. And I do want to point out one mistake before I start here. One thing I did, and uh, one of you commented in the video a couple videos back uh, about why I didn't add compost to the beds that I started here. I have radishes and then I have arugula. And I was just so, so gun ho and ready to get planted that I didn't add compost and I just went ahead and added it directly to the soil that I had prepped and like I said before, the soil has been lacking. So what happened was the radishes have done well, but the arugula, because there's not the nutrients there that it needs, well, they didn't grow very well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the flame weeder and just burn this up, turn this bed over, add some amendments and compost in it. So that way the plants can have everything that they need and we won't be we won't have crop loss or we won't have a crops that didn't do what they're supposed to do like we do we have like we have here. Okay, 
and this is Ben's second year helping us out here on the farm. And I've seen some tremendous growth in Ben and, and some of the thing that, things that he is able to do on the farm. And he's really doing a great job. And this past week, I gave him his first lesson with the Kelvin Cultivator Flame Weeder. And you can see here, it's just been a few minutes and already where Ben has used the flame weeder, they're dying, wilting over. Some of them are a little burned, but they gradually just die. And after Ben flamed this bed, we went ahead and immediately turned this bed over so that way we can begin transplanting some plants in there. I'm super eager and ready to get plants in the ground. And there are some transplants that are super eager in the greenhouse to be placed in these beds. So we got that done and they're ready for those plants. Also later this week, we had my niece Lita. She came and helped us out on the farm for the very first time. And let me tell you, having help here on the farm has shown me the value of having people to come help you out and do different tasks. And Lita, on this her first day, she did an excellent job. She started the day off with helping, working with Sela in harvesting microgreens. and they did a fantastic job. And while they were harvesting the microgreens, Josiah, Micah, and I were harvesting radish. Typically we grow, let me show you here, French bre breakfast radishes. And these are really good radishes and they have a short date to maturity and uh, they're, really, they're really good. But this time we did, and excuse me if I pronounced this wrong, Jertzinka, radishes and they're like pink purplish color and they turned out really really well these are actually the prettiest and the best tasting radishes that i have ever had they're not overly spicy but they were just pretty and this past week we harvested those together okay get down low wiggle it out yeah, can you get it out? No. Yeah, you can get it out. Try again. You gotta pull a little bit. You got it. Good job. You got the radish out. Here, have me, give me a five. Bang. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Tell people to wiggle, wiggle. You gotta pull too, though. Wiggle, pull. Wiggle and pull. Wiggle, pull. Wiggle, pull. Wiggle, pull. Wiggle, pull. Come on, can you get it? Get it. Mm. Try it again. You'll be the first baby to pick a yeah. big radish. Yeah. You got it. Way to go, Micah. How's that make you feel? Good. Good? Looking good, Josiah. Keep it going. Let me help you out. That like a little baby like you? <laughs> <clears throat> what about that one? Is that one bigger? Dad. That's the daddy one? <laughs> Another one? Dad. Mommy. <laughs> That's the mommy one? Uh, there's just some more small ones that like Josiah and Sayla. <laughs> Recently we started bunching our radishes and other root crops in the field, in the garden, and this has made the process go a lot faster and more efficient.
And as we were harvesting, as we typically do with some of the tasks here on the farm, we also I also was trying to throw in some learning lessons and some homeschooling as I was hanging out with the boys. And this day, Mike and I were talking about colors. So what are these again? Are these apples? <laughs> what are they? Radishes. Yep, radishes. Alright, can you hand me a blue rubber band next? You know which one's blue? That's blue. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. And bam! Here is a bunch of the radishes right here. And they're a little sweeter than normal radishes. And I also think that the leaves, you can eat the leaves on most radishes, but they're usually rough and they're better if you cook with them. But these I find to be more tender. And you can eat it right away. And this week I tried these radishes in a salad. I took my salad greens mixture that I normally have, put it in a bowl. After that, I chopped off the leaves of the radishes, mixed them in with the other greens. Next, I sliced up the radish root, threw it in the salad mix. And then finally, I took our radish microgreens and sprinkled them in too. And this dish was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. And you can have this salad with or without salad dressing and it's still great. And it feels so good to eat things that you have grown yourself. Besides collecting toads again. After the boys and I harvested the radishes, next we turned them over to Lacey and Lita to wash them. We switched off and Sayla came with me to harvest greens for our salad mixes. And this is where the brunt of the work, the day's work, or the week's work, actually, came into play because we had a lot of greens that we needed to harvest and wash and package in the same day. Reason why is we still don't have our walk-in cooler quite finished yet. So all of this had to be done in one day. We started off with harvesting the lettuces. After that, we harvested the other items that I mix in with the salad mix. That includes arugula and spinach, as well as some scarlet kale, which I really love the color. And it's like a really neat, interesting purple looking color. We were putting the tatsoi flowers in there, but this week they were growing so tall and they look like they're really going to go to seed so we went ahead and pulled those out and fed those to the chickens and the ducks and they absolutely love them after we finished harvesting this first batch of greens we took them up to the ladies, Lita and Lacey, and they were just finishing up with the radishes and they had them drying in our washing pack station. And then they begun washing these greens for us. Then we, Sayla and I had to go back in the field, this time in a caterpillar tunnel, to harvest some more greens. And at this, and at this point, it was getting pretty warm. We've actually been getting temperatures here in the 80s, 70s and 80s here recently and it's even hotter than that in the caterpillar tunnel. Alrighty, so this is definitely not the best time of day to be harvesting greens, especially here inside the caterpillar tunnel and it's been 80 degrees, so and it's even hotter in here. So what I'm doing is I'm harvesting lettuce and then trying to harvest it as fast as I can and put it in a basket and then rush it right up to the wash and pack station and putting it in water to be washed just so that way we can keep it from wilting and going soft. Uh, salad greens, greens in general, if they're left out in the heat for an extended period of time, not even an extended period, just a short amount of time, they can go soft on you and, and you don't want that. You want your greens to have that nice crunch texture and uh, to be firm. So I'm gonna knock this out. Fast. 
So we were taking harvest after harvest up to the wash and pack station for the ladies to wash, dry, and then package. So everybody was getting a full day of work in for sure. And we still don't have our greens dryer quite ready yet. We plan to do a video on that here pretty soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But the ladies, they were working their guns. They were drying all this lettuce off by hand is the initial process of in this manual salad spinner of just pressing and pressing and then once you kind of get it dry for the first part it'll still have some moisture on it then they put them under the fan to be dried off for the last part of being dried then after that they weigh them and then put them in our refrigerator and then our refrigerator was definitely filling up for sure both of them we actually have two so we look forward to having that cooler here pretty soon hopefully uh but we still have some ways to go on it and this day, I was super happy that Evan set up the electrical work at our wash and pack station. No longer did we have to run a drop cord from our house all the way up into our wash and pack station to power our refrigerators. Nope, that was gone. He set up outlets for us to be able to plug it in and have power up there. And also, he set up some lights for us in our wash and pack station so that way I could keep working drying and packaging all the greens so that way they could be ready for our customers the next day and we actually got the job done also speaking of evan if you missed last video i showed how we helped evan and his wife kyra take their area that they had that they envisioned for their garden from being brushed to garden all in one day so make sure you check out that video and this past week since I was at Evan's house, I had to deal with some poison ivy, and poison ivy is not my friend, so just part of, uh, part of the sacrifice of helping out some friends. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and click notifications each time I release a new video. And stay tuned, because each week I'm sharing with you what I'm doing on my farm in my garden to have greens available, growing, and able to harvest each week all throughout this year so make sure you subscribe and sign up for those notifications if you would like to meet me as well as my family at the homesteading life conference in Hanover, missouri make sure you get your tickets now because tickets are selling out fast and make sure you get those tickets also you can get any of the seeds that i mentioned in today's video at baker creek heirloom seed company that's it for today we'll see you next time and grow on Slept here for days